ABC's The Bachelor, season finale, Monday at 8, 7 central on ABC. So last night I got the courage to talk to Ben about my daughter and the fact that she has Tourette syndrome. And I th we had a really great conversation about it. You know, I told him that she was diagnosed at age seven, which is right in the middle of the typical onset for children. It's between five and 10. And I was so shocked to find out that she had Tourette's because it's more common in boys. And although there's no cure and it's a chronic condition, I have high hopes for her future. I'm really glad Lace was able to share that with me about her daughter. It shows to me that she's really getting serious about this relationship. Also, it kind of shocked me because only 200,000 Americans had the more severe form of Tourette syndrome and about one in a hundred exhibit milder, less complex symptoms. I'm kind of annoyed at Lace because she pulled aside Ben last night to talk about her daughter. And I think that is important, but I need time with Ben too. There's only two of us left. And from my experience, if her child has mild Tourette syndrome, she'll most likely grow out of the tics and she might not even have functional impairments. Oh, look, Christina Harrison. Oh, hi. Good morning, ladies. As you know, you both have a date with Ben today, but there will be no rose given out. Oh, Hi, ladies. I brought you to the school today for the date. Um, I was hoping to learn a little bit more about Tourette syndrome from you guys. So maybe what you guys can do is maybe go up on the whiteboard, uh, write down what you know, and maybe I'll sit in the classroom like a kid. Awesome. I'm really excited for this challenge on this date today to impress Ben and teach him about Tourette syndrome. Okay, so I guess I'll start. Um, we're talking about Tourette syndrome today and, you know, I know a thing or two about it. So, I'll begin. Um, first, it's diagnosed by a doctor, and the diagnosis is based on DSM-5 criteria. And I wrote the criteria up here. The first one is both multiple motor and one or more vocal tics have been present at some point. The second one is tics may wax and wane in frequency, but they've persisted for more than a year since the first tic onset. The onset is before age 18. And the disturbance is not due to a direct physiologic effect of like a substance or a general medical condition. So those things get ruled out. And basically, the most important thing about Tourette's is the tics, which are abnormal movements or vocalizations. And they can be motor or vocal, and they can be simple or complex. So for example, like a simple motor tic would be blinking because it only involves one muscle or one muscle group. And complex would include multiple muscle groups like jumping or hitting. And a simple vocal tick could be grunting. This is something my daughter does quite a bit. And a complex vocal tick could be like just spitting out phrases and things like that. And some other conditions that could be worrisome that occur with Tourette syndrome are things like OCD, ADHD, and anxiety. Thanks so much. I know this date is about Tourette's syndrome, and I don't think it's fair because Lace, Lace obviously knows a lot about it, but I might surprise them. Okay, so I guess it's my turn to teach about Tourette's syndrome. So these are some of the things that I've learned. There's no exact cause for Tourette's syndrome, but they think it's caused by a multiple, numerous factors. So some of the things is um, your there could be abnormalities in your brain, such as in your basal ganglia, your frontal lobe, or your cortex. There could be abnormal circuits between the brain, and there could be um, abnormal neurotransmitters, like dopamine, serotonin, or norepinephrine. It also has a genetic link, so I don't know if someone else in your family might have it, but five to 15% of it occurs in first degree relatives. There's a five to 15% chance of it occurring. And there can also be environmental and epigenetic factors. So if you have streptococcal infection, well, um, you might be more prone to getting Tourette's syndrome if you don't have a good immune response to streptococcal infection. Um, some of the other things I learned about were medical treatments. So um, usually ticks, you, someone can outgrow them, but if there are functional impairments from the tics, you can give them some medication, such as neuroleptics, so haloperidol and pyrrhodide. Um, some side effects include sedation, 
inflammation, weakening, cognitive dulling, and more severely, the child can get tardive dyskinesia if they use it for a long period of time. They can also get tremors and Parkinsonian-like symptoms. Yeah. What, what do those medications do for the child? How do they help them? They decrease their amount, the frequency of ticks oh. that the child will experience. And that's only if the child is um, has ticks that are impacting their function. So you give them some medication. You can also give them medication for like co-occurring um, conditions. So as Lace said, OCD, ADHD, ADHD, and anxiety, you can give them medications for that. So for depression, you might want to give them some SSRIs. And if the ticks are super severe, you might need to go in and do some deep brain stimulation. So you go in and put an electrode in the electrode electrode in the brain, and that will stimulate more areas of the brain that need to stimulate. But yeah, usually a child can outgrow the ticks, and most of their impairments will be due to the co-occurring conditions as they grow older. That's yeah. it. Thanks so much. Wow, I was really impressed by how much knowledge they both had about threat syndrome. I'm really looking forward to the cocktail hour. Yes, I really enjoyed your talk that you gave today in the school. I was wondering, maybe, can you talk to me a little bit about what your daughter goes through? Sure. Um, well, you know, since she has Tourette's syndrome, she's at a higher risk for things like depression and substance abuse. And if she's in like a high anxiety situation, her tics may actually worsen. <laughs> and she struggles on a daily basis with you know, some of her daily activities, like her chores, um, playing with friends, participating fully in school. And she does have some inattention problems, but mostly it's because of like the physical discomfort and the social embarrassment that she receives from the tics. And she also does, she does struggle with like reading and math in Can schools I? too. Uh -huh. Can I actually steal him? Sure. Bye Ben. Bye Liz. Hi Ben. Hey Olivia, what's up? Nothing much, much. how are you? I'm doing okay. I was, I think you might like be a little confused about mm -hmm. how I knew so much about Tourette's syndrome earlier today. Oh yeah, that was puzzling me a little bit. Yeah, well I'm actually an occupational therapist. Oh great, I was looking for a new job. Well, <laughs> actually. That's funny because a lot of people say that, but that's not exactly what we do. Oh. So, for example, with um, Lisa's daughter who has Tourette's syndrome, there's a lot of things that we can do for her. Like so, what? Well, we might actually um, work on having her recognize when she's about to have her takes, when she's about to experience them, and help her manage that and make a schedule around that. We can also work in her school setting you know, change the environment a little bit so it's less stressful, so that doesn't trigger her tics, and make sure she has strategies for reading and writing. We can also help her with medication management if she's taking any medications at this point, and even things like making sure she's not wearing tight collars because that could trigger tic episodes in some people, or hearing certain sounds can trigger episodes. So things along those lines. Oh wow, really mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah, and I actually actually work with um, cognitive behavioral therapists, oh. and they also help with people with Tourette's syndrome deal with their disorder, and they use cognitive behavioral intervention for tics to help them increase um, self-awareness and things along those oh, lines. Oh wow, that sounds really great. Yeah. So what are you guys talking about? Mind oh. if I sit with you? Welcome back, Liz. Oh, oh wait. Oh. Is that Christina Harrison calling us for the rose ceremony? So I had a great talk with Ben tonight, and I really feel like we got to know each other a lot better, and I'm ready for the rose ceremony, and I'm excited to spend the rest of my life with him. I feel like me and Ben really have a deep connection, and I'm so excited to get the final rose tonight. Wow, I really got to know the two of them well this week. I learned that Lace has a daughter, and I learned Olivia's job. I am a little concerned that they waited this long to tell me those things, though. We'll see how it goes. Three. Hello, ladies. Ben. Welcome to the rose ceremony. This is the final rose. It's been great to get to know the two of you. I've enjoyed all the time that we spent together. I've thought long and hard about the decision, and the final rose is going to... Daniela. Wait. <gasps>